Hi, this is Pastor Kevin L. Lipsy Sr. and welcome to Loving Correction's teaching series. Today on Loving Correction, we are in part two of the Holy Spirit being our paraclete. I am so excited about today's show. Won't you stay with me? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. God bless you and welcome to Love and Correction. This is Pastor Kevin L. Lipsy Sr. And I am so excited about today's broadcast. We are in part two of the Holy Spirit being our paraclete and how the many ways that he is actually helping us. Uh, but before we get started, let me just start off by saying Happy New Year to all of the listeners and to all of the viewers. I hope that your new year starts off with a blessing and ends in a tremendous blessing. We just give God the glory and the honor and praise for that. Again, we are in part two of the Holy Spirit as being our paraclete. But before we do that, uh, won't you pray with me? Father, we just thank you and we give you praise and we give you glory for this, your people. We thank you for this broadcast and we thank you for its listeners. Now, Lord, bless this teaching. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we just certainly thank God again for you uh, who are the listening audience because you could have tuned in anywhere else to anyone else but you decided to look and watch and learn here at loving corrections teaching series so we are talking about the holy spirit as our paraclete now what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to go into some of the things that we actually talked about last week and so as always, we love to kind of go over the previous week so you can kind of understand and get the gist of what we're talking about in today's uh, lesson. And so last week, if you tuned in on last week, we were talking about the Holy Spirit. We we're talking about the significance of his role in helping us uh, as believers. And so we explained to you uh, why it is that I felt it necessary to actually go over this is because of the misappropriation of the Holy Spirit and him as the person or a person of the Godhead. Uh, we understand that the Godhead uh, is one with one another, but they're yet distinct. And so, but they're one in essence. So you can't and won't find one saying something that the other did not say. And of course, we understand that the Holy Spirit's role in all of that uh, is to be our helper and so we went through those things and i told you that i thought it was going to be very controversial why is because of the fact that a lot of people have misappropriated the holy spirit and i told you all last week that he simply uh, we have relegated him to simply just tongues if not tongues we're only focusing on the gifts that he brings now there's a problem with that. And the reason there's a problem with it is that, is that now we are seeing in our world today, within the body of Christ, that there's an influx of supposed spiritual activity. Now, this spiritual activity is supposed to be done by the Holy Spirit. This is what they want you to believe. But we found out last week that a lot of people were, in fact, they are operating out of their own spirits. And so we seek to correct this misappropriation of the Holy Spirit because we went through last week how important he is to the Christian walk. And we even said on last week that the Holy Spirit, honestly, uh, is 100% of our relationship to God. And it's very important. Why? Is because we found out that man does not know how to pray. Or as the Bible says, he doesn't know what to pray as he ought. And so now we found out that the Holy Spirit's role in all of this is to help us in the areas of our greatest infirmity, and that is prayer. And so with that, we also went over the actual meaning of the word paraclete, and we found out that the Holy Spirit uh, is our advocate. Not only is our advocate, he is our advocate, but guess what? He's also our counselor. Yes, the Holy Spirit is our counselor. 
which means that he advises us, but he's also our greatest supporter. We took this um, from John chapter 14, verse 16, and it reads, and I will ask the Father, this is Jesus talking, and he says that he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. And he's talking about the spirit of truth, who is the Holy Spirit. So you kind of get the gist that what we have been talking about in previous uh, teachings is that the Holy Spirit is very important to our relationship with God. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit is very important. Not only is he, is he important, but he's vital. He's essential to our relationship in God. I would dare to say that using him in prayer is 100% of our relationship uh, to God. And, and one more thing, we also went over uh, the book of Jude and we talked about uh, in the book of Jude and how the misappropriation of that scripture, Jude, I believe it's one in 20, how we talked about how uh, Jude expressed to us to build up our most holy faith uh, in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. And we, we kind of help you understand what praying in the Holy Ghost meant. He wasn't talking about tongues. He was, let me say this again, he wasn't talking about tongues. And we gave you an illustration that if I were to give you a nail and if I were to give you a picture and I say, hey, hang this picture on the wall, what's missing? What's the tool that's missing? The hammer. The Holy Spirit is our hammer. We can't do it without the hammer. You can't have a relationship without the Holy Spirit with God. You cannot have that. You cannot have that. And today we're going to go a little bit further in it because of the fact that we have to understand that when Jesus was here on earth, the Bible says that he was our Emmanuel. In other words, he was God with us. Now, I'm going to dare to say uh, that the Holy Spirit is our Emmanuel. And I'm going to explain that in just a minute. As a matter of fact, let me say this, and then we're going to go back and we're going to review some more things, but then we're going to get back to this. I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit, number one, is God. Let me say it again. Number one, the Holy Spirit is God. And also, he is the extension of Jesus being our Emmanuel after Christ's ascension. He is the one that Jesus sent and left as our Emmanuel. So we're going to deal with that in just a minute. So let's just go ahead and take a pause for the cause on that uh, particular point. And let's go back. Now, in the way of going over what we were talking about last week. Now, moreover, we took uh, also, we were in the book of Romans. Yes, we were in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 through 28. And we talked about how uh, the Holy Spirit helpeth our infirmities. We found out people, that we have infirmities. We have infirmities. And one of the greatest infirmities, as I've just previously stated, is that we don't know how to pray. We simply don't know how to pray. But the Bible says that the Holy Spirit maketh intercessions for us, but he does it through these groanings. Now, we talked about these groanings. These groanings are, in fact, according to the Greek text, is a sigh. Yes, S-I-G-H, a sigh. It is just simply a sigh. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, what I mean is this. Can you picture this? You're praying. You're praying in an audible voice. And sometimes we pray within our hearts, and that's great. You're praying in an audible voice, and now God, through his Holy Spirit, is communicating with the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says that the, the, the Holy Spirit in verse 27, uh, in Romans chapter 8, it says, and he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. So now we have the Holy Spirit honestly knowing the mind of God. He knows the heart of man, and he's searching the deep things of God. And as you're praying, you're going to be praying, guess what? Advantage you. In other words, your prayers are going to be pretty selfish. Yes, they're going to be pretty selfish. I can guarantee you that because I pray selfishly. <laughs> we all do it. We are human. I do it. You do it. Everybody does it, right? But the Holy Spirit can take those prayers and he can interpret those prayers to God. And the Bible says how he does it. He says 
The Bible says that he does it with groanings that cannot be uttered. That means that he is speaking to God or communicating with God through a sigh. Through a sigh. And we told you on last week that guess what? The sigh doesn't have to be audible. It's not audible. Because he says with groanings that cannot be uttered, which means that they are unutterable. They are without voice. In other words, the Holy Spirit and God are communicating without even talking with one another. But he's intervening and intercepting, I should say, uh, interceding on your behalf. On your behalf in the form of a groan or a sigh, which he doesn't even have to speak. So this is what we learned on last week. Man, this is getting good already. Oh, this is getting good. All right. I hope you're being blessed. Please. And don't forget, I, I want to say this. Please don't forget to write me. Don't forget to reach out to me at klministriesinc.com. That's klministriesinc.com. I really would love to hear from you. So let's get back into this lesson. Okay. So we found out that we had this great and we have this great infirmity. We found out that the Holy Spirit intercedes on us because of this infirmity. And we found out that he helps us in this matter. Why? It's because he takes our prayers and he articulates these prayers through an emotion of a sigh. Him and God don't even have to have a conversation, but he knows the mind and the heart of the spirit. He knows the hearts of men. He searches the deep things of God. And he and God are communicating about you while you're praying advantage you. And so I don't know about you all, but I love the idea because the Bible tells us that many times we pray amiss. And we see in Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 28, we understand how we can get to that amiss part. We clearly see it, right? I do. And so we see that we are getting into a place of prayer sometimes, and we just plainly miss it, y'all. We miss it. We really do. And this should help us understand how we need the Holy Spirit and how he is our present help. He's our present help I'm in any situation. He is our help. And lastly, we talked about how important it was for us to mature in the things of God. Why is that important? It's because we need to learn how to pray. We need to learn how to pray. I know the scripture talks about it. Uh, even when the, uh, the, the apostles asked Jesus, well, Jesus, how should we pray? But he gives them a blueprint on how to communicate with the Father. What does he say? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven, so on and so forth. Do you think that Jesus was just saying this miscellaneously? No, he was giving us insight on how to pray. Because you have to understand, even as you're praying those so-called Our Father prayers, guess what? The Holy Spirit is still interpreting what's really in your heart. So you don't have to fabricate. You don't have to come up with a whole bunch of eccentric things and elaborate things to say to God. You can just simply say, oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And what the Holy Spirit is going to begin to do, he is going to begin to intercede on your behalf. And he's going to interpret your prayers, not by speaking in an unknown tongue or not by causing you to speak in an unknown tongue that you don't even know what you're saying. But what he's going to do is that he's going to articulate these things to God in the form of a sigh. So we need to mature in the things of God so that we can understand how we need the Holy Spirit and how important he is to our relationship with God. So let's now let's now get to it. Let's get to the lesson for today. Because I want you to understand something. I want you to understand, again, that the Holy Spirit is God. He is God. You need to respect that fact, and you need to know that fact. 
A lot of us grieve the Holy Spirit because we don't see him as God. We only see him as the person that comes with the gifts. The person that is supernatural. And we want to be able to use a supernatural gift. And we want to be able to showboat and show forth things. We want to be able to move and walk in power. But God is just simply saying, listen, you don't even understand why I gave you the Holy Spirit. We're going to get to that in just a moment. And so first we want to understand that the Holy Spirit is actually, he's God. He's a part of the Godhead. He is an extension of Jesus as being our Emmanuel. Yes, he is the extension of Jesus being our Emmanuel. And finally, he's the one that Jesus actually sent. Jesus actually sent him. Jesus actually sent him. And we're going to go over that in just a minute. So we can't do nothing without him. Two things. We're nothing without him, and we can't do anything without him at all. Folks, this is so very important for you to get on today. This is so very important. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to John uh, chapter 16. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin reading here. Um, John, actually, chapter 16. So I'm, let me go to my Bible here. And, um, and guys, understand this. I'm doing this in real time, okay? I'm doing this in real time here. Because I want you to get the gist. I did. Some people say, oh, well, it sounds like you didn't prepare. But yes, I did prepare. But um, for some things, you just kind of want to, you just kind of want to just go through it. And you want to you take your time and you want to be authentic with it. Because I really want you to understand this. Now, John 16, and we're going to go to verse 7. We're going to be reading from the NIV. But listen to this. But it says, very truly, Jesus is speaking here. Very truly, I say unto you. It is for me, it is good that I go away. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. He's saying, it is good for you that I go away. Because he says, when he comes, well, first of all, he says, unless I go away, he says that the advocate, remember I told you that the Holy Spirit is our advocate. But Jesus is saying, unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. Okay? But if I go away, he says this, I will send him to you. When he comes, he would prove the world, watch this, to be wrong about sin. This is one of the things that the Holy Spirit does. And of uh, sin, righteousness, and judgment. This is, this is what Jesus is saying. So Jesus is coming. I mean, Jesus is sending the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, listen, uh, I believe the King James Version said, it is expedient for you that I go away. Jesus is saying, first of all, there's going to come a day where you guys are not going to see me anymore, but listen, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Think about why Jesus had to send the Holy Spirit. It's not just about the gifts. Because at this point, Jesus is not necessarily expressing anything about any gift. He's expressing the importance of him leaving and, the whole, and him sending the actual Holy Spirit. Let's, let's go down to verse um, 12. Let's go down to verse 12. He says, I have much more to say to you. Now, how is he going to say these things to the disciples? He's saying, I have much more to say to you. He says, more than you can now bear. But when he, who, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truths. Now, let's stop right there. Number one, again, Jesus saying that he is about to leave. I'm going to not leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you someone to be with you. I am your Emmanuel as long as I'm here. But I'm going to send you someone else that is an extension of me. Oh, my God. And he is going to be your Emmanuel. In other words, he is going to be the one standing in my place. Why? It's because everything that he tells you, you're going to see it right here. He is going to, he, the Holy Spirit is going to get it from Christ. Let's keep reading. But when he, the Spirit comes, of the, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you in all truth. And he will not speak 
on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Now, what the Holy Spirit is going to hear is what Jesus gives him. Remember I told you about the Godhead. They are three distinctively, three persons, but they're one in essence. They operate as one. So we're not getting into polytheism. We're not even, we're not even talking about oneness. And oneness means that, you know, Jesus was God the Father in creation, but then um, in recreation or regeneration or what have you, of recreation, uh, he became Jesus Christ. In regeneration, he actually became the Holy Spirit. No, we're not talking about oneness. Oneness, Pentecostal. No, we're not talking about that. And we're not talking about polytheism, but we're talking about three distinctive personalities working as one. One faith, one Lord, one baptism one God. And so Jesus is saying, it is speeding for you. It is expedient for you that I go away. Because if I go away, I'm going to send you this comforter. And he's not only the comforter, but he is the spirit of truth. And he's going to reprove the world of righteousness, sin, and judgment. But for you, the believer, he is going to be your benefactor. He is going to be your helper because you need help. Again, we're not even we're not even addressing tongues. We're not even addressing prophecy. We're not even addressing gifts right now. We're just talking about how we need the Holy Spirit. We honestly need him. And Jesus understood that fact. And then he says that when he does come, he's not going to come in his own agenda. Why? It's because Jesus said in the previous chapter, God gave him everything. You remember when the dove came down and he says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Oh my God. Jesus said, all things have been given unto me in what? In heaven and in earth. And so Jesus is in charge. But when he left, guess what? He left the Holy Spirit in charge. Oh, y'all don't understand. Y'all got to get this. He left the Holy Spirit in charge. And we are under the authority of Christ through his Holy Spirit. Which means that we can actually grieve him and he can actually depart from us. Let's keep reading. Verse 14. He will glorify me. Who? The Holy Spirit is going to glorify Jesus. Because it is from me. Get this. It is from me that he will receive what he will make known unto you. Whatever you say that the Holy Spirit is saying, oh my God, he got it from Jesus. Now the question is, are you making Jesus a lie? Because the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit of truth. And he's going to lead and guide you in all truth. And if he's going to lead and guide us in all truth, and the Bible says that whatever and wherever he's getting his information from, he's getting it from Christ. He's getting it from Christ and he's making what Christ has said. He's making what Christ has said made known to you. So if I were you, I would be very careful in saying, well, the Holy Spirit told me. What you're essentially saying is, is that Christ told you. And I'm telling you, if the Holy Spirit is not saying, uh, if the Holy Spirit is not saying what Christ is saying, then I, I would think twice about where I'm getting this information from. Like I told you in the previous broadcast, you're speaking out of your own spirit. It's high time for us to stop speaking out of our own spirits. I told you on last week, the church is presently under judgment. Yes, God is cleaning house. Why? It's because we have misappropriated the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is yet doing the work of Christ. In other words, he is our Emmanuel in this hour, meaning that God is with us because Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. Y'all got to get this. Verse 15. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is... This is what Jesus, I just told you this. All that belongs to the Father, Jesus said, is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will receive from me 
what he would make known to you. God the Father placed all of this in Christ's hands. The church, everything that is going on today, that's why we, we say that God is in control. But really, in all actuality, reality, we need to say that Jesus is in control. Jesus, Yeshua, Christ, he is in control. And he's running it through and by his spirit. And we have to submit to that fact. We simply have to submit to that fact. Y'all, my time is up. <laughs> my time is up. And man, this is getting good. We're, we're going to go further into this because we need to understand this. We need to be able to break this down. We need to know about our paraclete. We need to know exactly why he's our helper and how influential and vitally important he is to us. He is so very important to us. He's not just prophecy, tongues, and all these other gifts. No, he's much more than that. He's much more than that. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Lipsy, and I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. My friends, we've come to the time where we offer you the opportunity to come to Christ. After hearing the gospel message proclaimed, you may be saying to yourself, I know I need to make a decision. Then right now is your opportunity to take the next step in your relationship with God. Maybe you're uncertain of where you stand with God. Here is your opportunity to find peace and to know you're in right standings with Him. If this is you, then according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt believe in thy heart, God has raised him from the dead, then the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Listen, if you prayed this prayer and you've confessed the Lord Jesus Christ, then we want to connect with you. Contact us at klministriesinc.com. We're waiting to hear from you. Love and Correction, brought to you by KL Ministries, would like to thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, please send your gifts of love through the online services provided. In advance, we would like to thank you for your generous support in helping us take this ministry worldwide. Well, folks, that's it for today's show. We certainly hope that this teaching has been a blessing unto you. And from all of us here at Loving Corrections Teaching Series, as always, we're going to love you while correcting you, and we're going to correct you while loving you. That's it for now. We'll see you next week, right here, same time. Bye-bye.